Hi and welcome to this episode of Shop Miscellany. I've got a couple quick projects here. One actually wasn't quick, but I won't be able to show you all the details. So let's just go through them real quick. The first one is I made this emergency collet to fit these 2.1 millimeter needles and they fit perfectly. However, this is an inexpensive uh, Asian 5C emergency collet. And as a result, it's sprung. So when I pull the pins out, yeah, you can't, this is 10 thousandths undersized. So I'm gonna drill it oversized with the pins in, pop the pins out and hopefully it'll be right. So that should be quick. I'm gonna use uh, this guy, the 5C collet block, a six point so I can hold it in my six jaw chuck over on the lathe. That way I can make sure I get down center. And we're just gonna drill this guy out and hopefully we'll write when the pins come out. Let's see. First up, got the 5C emergency collet mounted in this uh, six-sided uh, holder. This is, you know, for holding parts and being able to mill off like six sides, but it also works fine in the six-jaw chuck here. It does uh, mar up the edges a little bit, but I want to make sure this is dead center, so. And I actually measured this uh, particular 5C holder, this collet block, and uh, it's, it's like a, accurate to about a thousandth or so in the center. It's not super precise, but it is ground. All right, so to, to control a really small drill bit, I'm gonna use this Albrecht uh, very sensitive drill bit. Uh, lets you manually control how much force is on the drill bit. You can, you can feel it, so you don't worry about it getting damaged so much. Uh, but in order to hold this, I have this MT4 ER40 holder for my tail stock. I could have put it in a, in a drill chuck in my tail stock, but I don't trust that it would hold it centered well enough. Uh, I have an, a fairly inexpensive drill chuck, so we're gonna use this instead just to hedge my bets. Small drill bits don't have a lot of margin and they're pretty easy to break. Got my lathe turned up to a high speed. This is a number 42 drill bit and it should uh, give me about 10 thousandths oversize and that should be it. That was that simple. The setup took a lot longer than the procedure. Let's hope it worked. Once I pull those pins out and the, the jaws spring back, we'll be able to find out whether that uh, is gonna fit all right. So before I pull the pins out, this is like a BB in a box car, 10 thousandths over. So let's hope when I pull these pins out and it springs back into shape, should be just right. I originally counted on this being uh, accurate enough that when I pull the pins out, it's on size, but this is a uh, inexpensive Chinese uh, made emergency collet and you get what you pay for. <laughs> All right, I pulled the pins out. It's completely loose and perfect fit. So I just had to compensate for the spring in the 5C collet. Unfortunately, the customer got delayed, which I'm very upset about, uh, but it tightens up nice and holds the part. And when you're done, pins come right out, right on the money. All righty, well, that's one down, on to the next. The next project I have, which is another quick one to show you, but not a quick one to do, uh, is an issue I've had since I started shooting video out here, which is there's never enough light under the quill here when I'm shooting. So I've got directional lights off to the side, which you can turn on. They're little spotlights and I use those as fill uh, one on this side, there's one on this side where the camera mounts. This whole fixture here lets me swing the camera over and position it to shoot things. And I can aim this light down in there, but it is not very diffuse and tends to have, well, you can see on camera here, it's much like a spotlight. So not ideal as well. Typically the part, you know, when the milling machine's running, moves in and out of the area where the light is and you don't get decent exposure, as I'm sure you've seen from watching my videos, at least not as good as it could be. I have lots of light above. I added these two big lights overhead, one on each side, plus that other one behind there, and still not enough. So I have another solution using a really interesting part uh, that's sold for, of all things, cars. A decent solution to the lighting problem I have would be a ring light, but they're really expensive typically until I ran across this interesting tidbit. For a long time, older BMWs have added an accessory part, well, 
P owners of older BMWs have purchased an accessory part that's not stocked with any BMW, and they call them angel eyes or angel halos. And they're actually ring lights that go on the car, and they come in a whole bunch of different sizes. This is a uh, 100 millimeter one and a 120 millimeter one, and I chose these two because they would nest. But there's a bunch of other sizes you can go with. They're LEDs. They're also dual color, which I don't need. They have amber LEDs and white LEDs going around, uh, around the ring here. And uh, they come with a constant current supply. So you feed them between 9 and 36 volts on its input. Uh, black is common. Red is the white light. Yellow is the amber light on this particular model. And each one of these has a constant current driver that's designed for the specific group of LEDs. And they come in pairs. So I ended up with four of these. Uh, I only needed two. Uh, but it gives me an option, opportunity to try out making a ring light. And so I worked on 3D printing up a solution. And my first solution was this guy right here. Now this post attaches on the side of the mill. There's a little post that you can screw in that hangs down that will hold the ring light in place. And the ring lights uh, fit right in this guy here. And the solution to get the wires out is I just put a slot and I was gonna have the wires come out the side. Let me show you what I had in mind here. This was my first go. So this sort of fits in here. I gotta, you gotta cut these tabs off. I could have designed it to have the tabs hold the part in. But instead, uh, I designed it just to cut the tabs off. So picture this, that one there, and this guy here with the wires coming out the side. But then I was trying to deal with uh, where am I going to put these little DC to DC constant current drivers. And I was thinking, well, I could mount them up the side. This has disconnects, rapid disconnects, so it'd be convenient. I could put magnets on these and attach inside the mill. I really didn't like the, all these wires, the idea of all these wires. So I thought, you know, maybe we need a redesign. By the way, this is designed for two set screws. There's a rod that goes here and that'll hold it in place. Um, but I had a redesign and here is the redesign. And this is building off of that particular design. Here's the two ring lights in place. These two I've cut the tabs off of. And inside here will fit the PC boards. And I was careful to mark them. This is the this is the 100 millimeter diameter ring power supply. And this is the 120. I was careful to mark them so I didn't mix them up. Notice that one set of leads comes off the bottom, one set of leads comes off the top. So I designed it for the leads on the bottom, which will hook up here. You can see there's the connector for it. Uh, this will fit in like so. So the leads on the top could be available. Over here on the side, this holds the two PC boards like so. These will be the DC in. I don't need the yellow wire, so I will just not terminate that. The red and the black can be attached together. I bought an inexpensive 12 volt power supply on Amazon. Uh, this is 12 volts at three amps. Actually, I had this one at work, but you could buy it on Amazon. They're very inexpensive now, uh, which is great. And then I made a snap-in cover here that just snaps down the top and the wires can come right out up the top. Uh, and that's, that's gonna be my solution. So let me uh, assemble this guy. Uh, what I need to do is I need to cut these, these wires here and cut the connectors off. I also need to hot glue the lights in. Now you're thinking hot glue, they'd probably pop off, but these don't actually get very warm at all. But there's a surprising amount of light with them. And instead of having the slot come out the side, uh, these guys actually, these guys actually have a hole down the middle to feed the wires through. And that uh, seemed like a pretty good solution. So that's where I'm at with these. I'm just gonna put a tiny spot of, of hot glue. By the way, the diffusion bezel comes off on this. So if you didn't want it, you could just pull the LEDs out of here and use them on their own, which is another option. I think I like the diffusion though. And you can just sort of see here, I don't know if you can catch that on the side, there's two different color LEDs and each with its own ring. Now, I could attach both of them together to get twice the light, but I'm not sure this constant current driver uh, was expecting both rings, so it would probably dim both rings, and you end up with the same amount of light output, just of a mixed color, which I didn't want. So I think first we're going to hot glue these guys in place, and I need to mark which one's which, so the big ring, I might as well just uh, put an identifier on it so I can find it. So this one will be the big ring. And the other one will be the small ring. And I'm just gonna glue them in. Got a brand new hot glue gun here. I purchased this one. Uh, I have quite a few hot glue guns. The basic hot glue gun's less than 100 watts. 
Um, they're like 40, 30, 40 watts, and the glue comes out fairly slowly. They got a very small nozzle. Then I bought a 100 watt version, which had a slightly bigger nozzle. Still couldn't get the glue out at the speed I wanted. So this is a 300 watt model, and the glue comes out much faster. You can burn through a stick much more quickly with this guy. Before I had glue these guys in place, I should uh, try and tap these guys for quarter 28 uh, grub screws, which I'm going to put in there to hold the rod in place, although this is a very snug fit. So tapping plastic's pretty easy, but uh, this is a hard plastic. There's PLA, so you sort of need to get it right. It's hard to do this on camera while trying to hold this so that you can see at the same time because it'd be pretty easy to pull the threads out. I chose quarter 28 because I didn't want deep threads and I didn't even bother trying to 3D print the threads in place because these are pretty small threads and I don't think that would go very well. So you can see that they take threads. There's not gonna be a lot of force on this because like I said, the, the, the rod fits pretty tightly on its own. If you want something with more longevity, you're gonna constantly loosen this, uh, tighten and loosen this. You could use one of those threaded inserts and melt it in place. I think this will be fine. I thought about trying to make this whole part out of aluminum, but getting this section here, doable, but it would be kind of challenging. I'm gonna feed both of these guys through here so that I'm ready to go. And then I'm gonna add the hot glue, try and pop these guys in place. I figure if I should do the outside first or the inside. I think I should do the outside for the, the large ring first. So I'm going to try that. Had a little bit of concern about the hot glue potentially melting the, uh, the plastic, which I guess it could. I don't think it's that warm, though. All right. Looking good, got some hairs from the hot glue gun here. Anyone into 3D printing knows that uh, these kind of hairs are pretty common with 3D printing as well, since it's a very similar process, heating up a plastic and then extruding it. All right, that's, uh, that's a good fit. I'm liking that. All right, let's do the inside. All right, that's looking good. I just got to get rid of some of the excess hot glue off the inside that squeezed out. So the diameter of the quill was about the size of the inside diameter of the small ring. So I wasn't able to have plastic. I originally printed it and it was too snug a fit, but I need the quill to go through here very smoothly. It can't catch when it goes through. I thought about even attaching this to the quill and then that friction would be okay, but I didn't think I wanted the light to go up and down. So I, I opted not to follow that approach. All right, let me clean up some of this hot glue. I'll be right back. First goal is just gonna be remove the wires on the LED side from all three of these. Interesting choice. They use really nice wire. They use silicone wire on these guys, which is uh, expensive stuff. So after I went all the trouble of marking the connector and I went and cut them off so that I could solder them to the boards, guess what? Guess what the Moron did? The Moron, uh, oh, actually I can see which ring it goes to. This one goes to the 120 and this one goes to the 100. I was gonna say, I can't tell which ring goes where. So this is the outer ring. Fortunately, I made the hole big enough so that you can actually see where the wires are going. That's just plain dumb luck because uh, I'm a moron. So here's the two power leads and they're going to come back towards the center and then exit the exit the unit. So you might think that it'd be a good idea to have more space above these PC boards here to have the wires and it turns out that there's not a lot of space above here for the quill between the rest of the mill and the quill here if I want this to go up uh, to be all the way up. So I compromise and I'm going to have to make my, my connections outside the box here, which is not ideal. So my snap's not perfect. Yeah, I think I needed more than two points of snapping. I, I left a little too much slop in the lid. I might print another lid at some point, but this will do for now. 
Uh, I can also add hot glue to hold these wires in place so that they don't get damaged. All right, so we finished uh, soldering the wires up. I thought about building a switch into this part so you could turn this off and on here. That would still leave this 12 volt power supply all the time being a vampire circuit, you know, just drawing power out of your mains without, uh, you know, feeding anything. So instead for now, I'm just gonna unplug it. This does have a removable plug here as well so you can use long or short cord. That's a handy option. I know I didn't explicitly show it, but here's the rod on the side of my mill. I know in a lot of mills, this casting is broken because things have hit it. I don't normally leave this rod in place. But I will be now because that's where I'm going to mount this ring. So it's got a flat on one side and a half round on the other side. It's probably metric, but it's pretty close to 5 16ths. Uh, so uh, I'm going to make a different rod just so I can leave with this part and leave these screwed down and I can adjust it here. But in the meantime, we'll use the one we've got. All right, so I've got this guy mounted over here, tightened the set screws. They hold it pretty decently better than this thumb screw does actually, so that's not a problem. Probably if you took it on and off and use these set screws a lot, they probably wouldn't help as much as they, they should, so, but I think we're good for now. This is with ambient lighting with no additional light. Here is with my spotlight, and you can see that the spotlight is very directional, not very diffuse, and it's hard to get, it's so bright in the center that it changes the exposure of the camera and makes it so that it's very hard to get an even lighting across the part you're working on. So not ideal. Now let's turn on the ring light. There's the ring light, nice even lighting, plenty bright. I put two of the rings in here instead of just one because I wanted to get as much diffuse light as possible. This is adjustable up and down. As you can see, I've got it all the way up right now. I can go down as well. There's up, just got to make sure the quill stays centered. Although the flat on this, I think lines it up more or less correctly. I think I had to tweak it a little bit. Yeah, there we go. All right, so here's the light in place. I got to deal so, do something with the wires. I think I'm going to come up with a magnetic solution for the wires just to manage them, keep them out of the way uh, so that the wires can just sit and then oil won't be a problem for the magnets holding and I don't have to actually glue anything on the side or drill holes in the casting. Don't want any of that. So magnet, I think, is the way we'll go or magnets. I'll let you know when I come up with that solution. I'll make the files available, the STL files available for this 3D part if anyone's interested, or the CAD models if they really want. Um, I didn't do a perfect job on the, the lid for this box here. It's the first time I ever did that. The first one was too tight and the second one's a little bit loose, which I don't like, but I think it'll work for now. I'm gonna see how this light works out. Uh, I'll put links to the Amazon uh, uh, purchase place for these lights. They come in pairs, so if you want two lights like this, you're gonna have to buy four. They're not terribly expensive. As I recall, they're in the 20 something dollars for two. It makes it 10 bucks a light. Not terrible at all. Uh, most people probably do not have the issue of trying to shoot their uh, machining. So maybe this doesn't apply to a whole lot of people. Hopefully it's useful, but it's probably more useful for YouTubers that are trying to shoot what their, their machining work. Uh, in any case, thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.